Hey friends, what's going on? My name is Jamie Dean and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I thought I might try and restore that copy of Turok Dinosaur Hunter that you might have seen me uh, pick up uh, a little while ago on the video game pickups videos. It's probably one of the worst condition Nintendo 64 games I've got. In fact, it's it's by far and away the worst Nintendo 64 uh, game that I've picked up in terms of like box quality and condition. It's torn, it's bent, it's possibly had water damage, there's stickers all over it, there's tape on it. It's in a real state. Um, the only reason I really picked it up is because it was super, super cheap and I thought, you know what? For the for the cost of you know less than I can get this thing just as a loose cart on its own, I'm gonna grab this. I'd be crazy not to, and just to see what I can do to try and restore this box. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna be doing today. I'm gonna be seeing if I can work a little bit of magic on this thing. I mean, I, I don't have a lot of hope. I'm gonna be honest. There's only so much you can do to a box in this kind of condition. There's no way in hell I'm gonna be able to repair like the tears and things. Um, but just to try and tidy it up a little bit and get it uh, looking a little bit better. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and, uh, and see how I get on with that and hopefully, fingers crossed, we come out the other side with a slightly better looking uh, copy of Turok for the shelf. Let's do it. <laughs> So, first things first, we need to empty the box. We don't want to be attempting to clean or do anything, put a hairdryer on it, put chemicals on it, whatever we want to do. We don't want to do any of that while the uh, cartridge and stuff is still in there. Uh, you can see the cartridge here, it does need a little bit of a cleanup as well. It's actually quite dirty. It's got some, uh, some God knows what. I don't know, I'm going to assume it's dirt. <laughs> but we're going to get all that out of there, put that all aside. Um, and we're going to flatten the box. We want to make sure that the box is nice and flat. So you open the uh, the tabs on the side, get it all flattened out. Make sure you're not adding to your problems by uh, creasing anything when you do so. And now, now we're ready to work. So the first thing I'm going to do here is try and tackle the most egregious uh, thing about this box, I think, besides the tears, which I can't do anything about. But I want to get this massive, you know, fluoro yellow traded in price sticker off the front of the box so we can actually see that cover art. If I can get away with just doing that, honestly, I'll be pretty happy. Um, now, when I tried to lift this up, firstly, what I'm doing here is, is you know, don't do this. <laughs> What I'm doing here is just testing to see how easily this thing is going to come off. Um, but this is a good way to tear your your box art and you don't want to do that. So um, once I've worked out that this is, this is well and truly stuck on and it's going absolutely nowhere, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is get a hairdryer and we're going to put the hairdryer on a hot setting. And I'm just using it on a uh, the sort of, I think that's the medium fan speed here. And I'm just sort of working it backwards and forwards over the sticker. And the idea here um, is just to try and loosen up that glue a little bit, you know, like that. that there's there's going to be times where, you know, this becomes a little bit of an impossibility uh, because the sticker's been on there for so long that it essentially just, the glue it becomes part of the box. Um, and there's just nothing you can do about that when that sort of thing happens. So um, we're just going to do our best here to try and loosen up that glue. I can see that the sticker will come off. That's what I was testing in the first place to see like, is this sticker now part of this box or will it actually be able to come off? I can tear at it. I can tear it away. So good start. Um, I think we can probably loosen the glue up here and, and get this thing off. It's just going to take a lot of hard work and elbow grease. So you can see here, I'm just on the hot setting, medium fan for really stubborn uh, stickers. You can go up to the high fan. I, I do. I've probably done it at some point here while I'm doing this. Um, and we're just moving the hairdryer backwards and forwards. We're not leaving it in one place for too long um, because we don't want to actually damage the cardboard or damage the box or, or get any kind of like discoloring going on because of the high heat. Uh, so we're just keeping the hairdryer moving, but you can see I've got it very, very, very close. It's almost touching the sticker. Like we're literally just a couple of millimeters above the box here. 
All right, so after a little while of giving it the old hairdryer treatment, we're going to see if we have any success trying to get this label off. So I'm just using my fingernail here. Um, I wouldn't recommend using a hobby knife or anything along those sorts of lines. I just think that's a bit of a recipe for disaster. So uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I don't have much in the way of nails uh, trying this at the moment. So it's a little bit harder than it probably would be if you had nails. Uh, but I'm just working away at it from a corner, uh, just slowly, slowly trying to pull it up and getting it and the glue at the same time. And you'll find uh, that it does still take quite a decent amount of work to, to get this off, depending on how ingrained that sticker has become and how long it's been on there for. But it is going to be a hell of a lot easier doing it after the hairdryer than beforehand, which will be basically an impossibility. Uh, so all I'm going to do now is essentially just go backwards and forwards between the two. I'm going to uh, work away at it until I feel like the cardboard is is cooling down and the uh, glue is cooling down, which I can see uh, doing here right now. And then we go back to the hairdryer to reheat it, give it another blast uh, to get it all nice and hot again. And then we go back to working and we're just going to flick backwards and forwards between the two methods until we either give up or we succeed. And success. Look at that. Gone. I'm happy with that. Look at that. That's fantastic. Doesn't look like it was ever there. So after a lot of hard work and elbow grease, we've managed to get rid of the main thing I wanted to do with this box. So that's great. So what we're going to do now, we're going to have a look at the back. Uh, and we're going to see what we can do about this tape that's on one side. Now when I bought this game, I actually thought that these were tears in the box. But when I was having a closer look at it during the pickups video, I noticed it was actually masking tape. Um, so we're going to apply the same method here. Now, the problem with this is that this tape is far more uh, stubborn than the sticker was. And the sticker was honestly probably one of the worst ones I've ever uh, had, to, had to take off. Um, but this tape was pretty much going nowhere. It's, it's obviously been on there for a very, very long time. It's on both sides. And I actually think that a lot of the tearing on the box is from somebody trying to remove this masking tape already in the past at some point, and it's ripped the box. So we're just gonna do what we can here, see how we go. Um, I don't have as much success with the masking tape, unfortunately, as I did with the with the sticker on the front, but I do manage to get some of it off. Uh, and, you know, that's better than nothing at the end of the day.
And that's about as good as I can manage to get it. Uh, the problem with the masking tape is it's going over the fold of the tab and trying to tear it away from there is also going to tear the crease, the, the paint, like not the paint, the printing off the crease of the box. Um, so I sort of cut my losses at some point. I did take a little bit of the the uh, printing off the, off the cardboard while trying to remove that, but I, I did manage to get a fair bit of it off here. So I was happy with the effort. Uh, it certainly looks a lot better than it did with uh, all the masking tape all over it, but I sort of um, look at it there and go, you know what, I think that's about as good as I'm going to be able to get it. And if I keep working away at it, I think we're only getting into, you know, damaged territory and I don't want to go there. So that's as good as we did on the masking tape. So the next job is going to be trying to tackle the sticker residue on the side on the front of the uh, box. And for that, we're going to use good old Mr. Sheen's multi-surface polish. Now, this is a little uh, a little tip from old Retro Ghetto. Shout out to Retro Ghetto, where I got a lot of um, the advice that we're seeing here. A lot of the tips uh, for cleaning up your boxes, uh, things like using the hairdryer and whatnot. Um, it's a bit of amalgamation of stuff that I've picked up from here and there watching other videos, but I watch a lot of Retro Ghetto um, and he's certainly helped me out a lot of times uh, getting getting boxes up to scratch. So thanks very much Callum at Retro Ghetto. Go and check him out if you, uh, if you like uh, having a look at old retro video game hunts and uh, seeing an incredible, fucking incredible retro video game collection. Um, man, yeah, it's unreal. So what I'm doing here first is just giving a, a spray to the front of the cover where that price sticker was that I got rid of, just to clean up any sticker residue that's left. Basically, you spray the Mr. Sheen on, you give it sort of 15, 20 seconds or so to, to seep into any glue and any residue that's there, and then you give it a wipe off. Uh, you can also give it a scratch uh, to, to loosen up if it's really, really stubborn, which is what we're going to do in a moment on this side. Of the, uh, of the front cover there, you can see just under one of my fingers where it says the player count. There's really, really bad old sticker residue on the black bar on the side of the, the front of the box there. So um, once we've cleaned up the front and that's come up nicely, we're now going to, oh, I've just noticed, just noticed actually, that there is actually a piece of tape covering the Nintendo seal which we obviously don't want. A piece of rogue tape that I missed in uh, my first sort of go-round. So we're just giving the uh, the tape a bit of the hairdryer treatment and then we're going to go to work on it uh, to see if we can remove it because, it, yeah, it'd be nice to have that uh, Nintendo seal covered. Of all the places to be covered, for God's sake, why the seal? Uh, so we'll see if we can sort that out. That's sorted that out. Take that, you fucking masking tape. And there's the seal. We can see it nicely. It's got a little bit, so you can see the tear. It goes into it a little bit. Um, that uh, could potentially be a bit of a problem, but we're going to be very deft here with our spraying of Mr. Sheen because you don't want to get that into torn cardboard, uh, if at all possible, because it will lift that shit up like nobody's business. So we're giving this a bit of a, a good dousing now. You can see much heavier spray than we did on the uh, face because it's very, very stubborn residue. We're going to let that sit there for a while. We're going to spread it around to make sure we're uh, very delicately going around that uh, front tear on the, on the cover there and making sure it's covered all over with all the sticker residue. We're going to start to scratch away at it to see if we can start to lift up some of that residue. And hopefully it will start to come away as it does. And once we've um, scratched it up for a little while here, then we will attempt to wipe it off. And it's best to do sort of repeated um, methods of this, I find, as I will demonstrate very shortly, as opposed to really heavily dousing it and just leaving it sit there for ages and ages and ages. Because uh, the longer it sits there, like this, this polished stuff is, it's strong shit. Uh, and if you let it sit too long, it will start to seep into the artwork of the box and start to lift that up. 
uh, in addition to any residue that you're trying to get rid of. So it's best to give it a spray, give it sort of 20, 25 seconds or so, wipe it off, give it a scratch, wipe it off, and then repeat if you need to, rather than leaving it sit for too long and risking damaging the box. So we've managed to pull up quite a bit of the residue here, which is good, but it is going to need another go around. We're just cleaning very delicately around that tear. Giving it a bit of a scratch, seeing what's left. And then we're going to repeat the process again. However, I'm about to make a very potentially disastrous mistake. Okay, so we're on to giving it another spray. Going for round two. You see I got a little bit on the exposed cardboard there, but we'll wipe that off straight away, no harm done. And we'll do the same thing. We're just going to spread it around. Make sure it's covering all the residue. Get it nicely around that tear. We don't want it going into that tear. Just sit there and start lifting up the the front printing on the box and now we wait and herein dear viewers is my mistake because you'll notice that I am not there I have been pulled away by an alarm going off in my kitchen to remind me to let my puppy out of her crate and then I become distracted by said puppy, all the while leaving the Mr. Sheen all surface polish sitting here seeping into the front of the box. Now you do not want to do this. I luckily, very, very, very luckily uh, get away with this with very minimal consequences. But this is the sort of thing where uh, it can just destroy a box. And you can see I haven't been even gone that long, you know, like I've rushed straight back when I've when I've done what I've needed to do. Come straight back, going straight into what I was doing, scratching off the residue. And even in that short amount of time, it has started to lift up some of the color out of the printing on the front of the box. The residue now is completely dissolved. It's gone. That's long enough to get rid of any glue. Uh, but you can see there some white dots appearing and what you cannot hear is me swearing at myself. <laughs> but luckily minimal damage, very very minimal damage. So I got away with that one, got back in time. If I'd been much longer I think I would have been in real trouble uh, and this box potentially could have ended up being a, a bit of a bin job. Um, but luckily I've got away with it. I've only lost a little bit of the uh, the printing on the on the front of the box there. I'm just having a look at it now. <laughs> Trying to make sure that it is not as bad as, uh, as it could have been. And honestly, a little bit of the printing coming away on the front is a hell of a lot better than all that sticker residue. So net win in my book. Uh, so here's the next step that we're going to do now. So when you use this all surface polish and just for cleaning in general for, for game boxes and things, I like to use a bit of window cleaner. That's my go-to. I find it's a nice, gentle um, cleaning solution that isn't going to risk ruining any artwork or damaging anything, but it does take the grime off really, really well. And it also removes the, the Mr. Sheen leaves like a bit of a... Um, uh, it's like an odd feeling after sort of not a stickiness uh it's more of like a like a slipperiness i don't know how to describe it it does leave like a bit of a uh, uh a texture to the box after you clean it and i find that uh going over it again with window cleaner just takes that uh that strange i don't know how to describe it other than mr sheen feeling <laughs> off of um off of the box uh, so I'm just giving it a good go over. Uh, again, I do this to all my boxes, all my cartridges. This is just my own personal preference. You can see how much fucking gunk is on it. Look at that. Disgusting. Um, but it does a really good job of just cleaning things up really, really well. I'm going to give the uh, cartridge a once over with this as well. Again, nice and gentle. It's not going to hurt the label. It's not going to damage the plastic. It's not like alcohol based or anything like that that you want to try and avoid. We'll just give that a bit of the spray of the old Windex. 
And what I find as I'm cleaning this actually is that the the dirt and grime on the cartridge, while I do get uh, some of it off with the window cleaner, it's actually stained the plastic here. Um, so I am going to go back over it with uh, some Mr. Sheen to try and remove as much of those brown marks off of the plastic as I can and then another go over with the window cleaner uh, just to finish it off. But yeah, window cleaner. If you want to clean your retro boxes, uh, that's I haven't seen anybody else use it, to be honest. That's just something that I've learned from experimenting. Uh, but that's, that's my go-to for cleaning old Nintendo cardboard is uh, window cleaner. It does the job, but doesn't uh, do any damage in the process. You're not going to risk losing that lovely artwork. Here we are with the Mr. Sheen now. Um, I'm not going to spray it directly onto the cartridge because I don't want to get any in on the actual board itself. I'm just going to spray it on a cloth and then we'll go over it and give it a nice scrub and then we'll finish it off with Windex again and that should bring up a nice clean cartridge. All right, and there we go. That's about as clean as I'm gonna get it. A hell of a lot better than it was, that's for sure. There's still a little bit of staining on the plastic. I don't know that I'm gonna be able to get that off without something a bit more serious, but um, for now, I'm happy with that. All right, so we're in the home stretch now, and the last step uh, to trying to get this box as good as we can get it looking is actually going to be to give it an iron. We wanna get all these uh, creases and uh, kinks and bowing and all that sort of thing um, out of it. You can see how badly creased it is in places there. Now ironing it is not going to get rid of all that. I mean if the crease is really bad like it is here that's you know there's no amount of ironing is going to, to get rid of that that's permanent but what we can do is try and give this box a little bit of its structure back that it's lost by being uh, crushed so badly. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just putting uh, it between a tea towel, an old tea towel. It's probably, you know, better off if you use an actual proper towel. Um, a tea towel can be a little bit thin, but because this is in such bad state, I want the heat to really seek, seek through. Um, then I'm going to spray it with water, give it a little bit of a spray, and then uh, we're going to go at it with the iron. And we're just going to keep the iron moving around like you're ironing a shirt, except it's made of old cardboard from... 20 to 30 years ago and we don't want to like the like the uh, hairdryer we don't want to keep the iron sitting in one place for too long I'm just slowly moving it around we're just sharpening all those creases uh, along the edges of the box which will make it nice and sturdy make it uh, sit nicely when it's put together again uh, and we're also flattening out those tabs that have been really badly uh, bent and kinked uh, you can see the the tea towel slips around a bit, which is why it's better to use an actual proper towel if you can, or a t-shirt or something like that. This is just what I happened to have to hand when I was recording. It was the closest thing, so I used that. Um, not ideal, but you know, it is what it is. It's slipping out there, put that back in. We don't want iron coming into contact, direct contact with the box itself. Uh, that's not gonna give you any favors. And we're just gonna keep working around Keep working it and you'll feel it as you're ironing it. You'll feel it go flat, you know, like you'll feel it actually uh, sort of flatten out and then you'll know uh, that you're good to lift the, uh, lift the tea towel or towel or whatever you're using up and have a bit of a look and see how it's going, which is what I'm going to do here in a moment. All right, let's have a look how it's doing. There we go. We have a completely, look at that, flat box, iron flat box. And you can already see like how much of a difference that's made to, especially this end here, to that crease. Like that was like a fucking dog's leg only a moment ago. Look at that side, that is sharp. The beauty of using the iron. Those little tabs there, you want to make sure they're nice and flat too. You don't want to accidentally iron a crease into them because <laughs> then that'll be there forever. I'm just going to go back over it now. I want to really iron out that um, that really badly folded uh, tab on the bottom there. I want to give that a good burst of heat and pressure to get that as flat as I possibly can. Again, when it's kinked that badly, you're never going to get it out completely. It's just impossible. Uh, any creases, like if, if a box is creased badly enough to put a line through the printing, 
that's that's you know no manic binding is going to get rid of that but i want to at least try here to make it as flat as i can but just after that first that first iron you can see how much of a difference that's made already uh, and i'm pretty happy with that Okay, second round done. Let's have a look. And there we go. Look at that. Way better than it was. A million times better than it was. It's amazing how much of a difference ironing your old retro boxes can make to their structure and their appearance. Um, yeah, I'm well happy with that. Like I said, there was never going to be any getting it rid of it completely, but that is as good as I could possibly hope for. Um, and I think that's made a ton of difference to that side of the box. So we're just getting it all back together now. And you'll feel again, after you've ironed it, you'll feel the difference in the box. You'll feel how much more structure it has, how, how much more rigid the box is. There it is. I mean, look at that. Compare that to what that looked like at the start of all this. You can see how much of a difference that's made. That's like night and day to where we started now. So that's that's fantastic. Got to be happy with that. So there we go. That is a finished and complete restored, kind of, Turok Dinosaur Hunter for the Nintendo 64. All right, and there it is is all done and finished and cased up in its box protector and i mean you know what i'm pretty happy you know I, like i said there's there was only so much i was going to be able to do at the end of the day like i can't repair the tears in the box um i was never going to be able to get rid of all of the creasing all of the um the scuffs and things that are on it but you know the, the big one i wanted to do was get rid of that big that big price sticker on the front and i have managed to do that very successfully and now you can properly and clearly see that wonderful wonderful box art that i love uh on this cartridge so so much um yeah i, I I'm, I'm pretty happy you know and like i said a box protector a box protector does wonders it really i think makes it look like a million dollars but I'll, I'll you'll be seeing some footage over the top um of the box without the protector on so you can get a good look at how things cleaned up uh, but overall like i said for the cost what I end up paying for that, this this boxed copy of Turok was less than what I see a loose cartridge go for. So I've gotten a really good condition manual, an insert and a box, essentially for nothing uh, with this one. So it was, it was a crazy good deal. It was an absolute steal. I couldn't just uh, leave it there. And if I ended up messing up the box in some way, well... It's it's uh, it, it wasn't a huge loss at the end of the day. So, yeah, I'm I'm really happy with how that's turned out. As you know, I'm not a, a mint in box collector. I don't care that there's a bit of scuffing and tearing on the box. Really, I mean, ideally, I'd like them to be in a little bit better condition than this. Um, but for the price. I'm, I'm happy, you know, I'm happy to have that one. My boxes that I had as a kid weren't in mint condition. Um, so I think having a little bit of love on the, on the boxes is all part of the, of the joy for me, all part of the story of the, of the game. So yeah, there we go. I'd say a, as successful as we probably could have hoped with this, with this game. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the end result. So yeah, uh, that's it. Let me know what you think. If you think uh, it was a fairly successful venture or if I just wasted a whole shitload of mine and your time. <laughs> I mean, at the very least, it's, it'll be a, a placeholder in case another beautifully boxed copy of Turok just happens to land in my lap one day. But I'm perfectly happy to have this one on the shelf looking the way it does now. Um, if you found any of that interesting, make sure you drop down in the comments and let me know. Um, I don't know whether these videos are terribly exciting to watch, if they're useful to you in any way, shape, or form. But if they are, please do let me know. It's a process that I do uh, go through on several of the games that I pick up. None of them are damaged to the extent that this one is, which is why I thought this one might warrant uh, a video. But I'm sure there will be other games in the future that are in this kind of awful condition uh, that could definitely use a facelift and a bit of a restoration. Um, and if it was exciting, I'll make a video about those too. Uh, but otherwise, uh, that's been it for me for today. Thank you so much for hanging out. My name has been Jamie Dean, and as always, make sure you keep on side-scrolling. Take it easy.